This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. All right, children, I invite you to come up. Good morning. I'm so glad that you could. Yay, Jack. I'm so glad that you all could be here with us. To start, I'd like to hear if anybody has been able to do anything super fun this summer. Maybe a vacation or a sporting event. Raina? Do you want to speak into the mic? Um, today we're going to our grandma's and stay at her house two days for family reunion. So fun. Thanks for sharing, Raina. Does anybody else want to talk into the mic? Henry? Camp Wapo. Oh, did you just get back on Friday? Can you share a favorite memory? Beach Bash. Beach Bash. Love it. Anybody else? Caleb or Isaiah? Anna? Or Jack? Jack, did you get to go on vacation? Yeah? Did you have so much fun? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yay for summertime. So for the children's sermon today, we are going to talk about some of the basic needs that every human has. Have you guys learned about some of these things in school? Yeah? Maybe some of you, since you're older, yes. This could be new for some of our younger ones. So I thought that to help us understand these things, we're going to play a game of Pictionary. So I brought a whiteboard and a marker, and I'm going to invite one person to come forward and draw a picture of one of these items that I have on my list of basic human needs, and then the rest of us are going to guess. And if it takes a little bit for us to guess, we also can invite the congregation to help us. How does that sound? Any volunteers to go first? Raina, thank you. Raina's got a whiteboard and a marker, and I need you to draw your favorite. So she's going to draw a picture here, and the rest of us are going to try to guess what she drew, thinking about the basic needs that all humans have. When you're ready, you can flip the whiteboard around. Now everybody else gets to guess what she drew. Raina, can I hold the whiteboard to show everybody? So this is what Raina drew. I'll show the congregation too. Any guesses what this might be? Yeah, big brother? How did you know? <coughs> Is this spaghetti, Raina? <laughs> spaghetti! <laughs> Micah, that's amazing. You're up next. <laughs> so the very first human need that Raina drew a picture of was food. And spaghetti happens to be her very favorite food. <laughs> Oh, one of her favorites. <laughs> Raina, what's your next favorite food? Mac and cheese. Tacos and lasagna. That's a good lineup. All right, Micah, can you show everybody what you drew? Hey, I heard it. Henry, say it louder. Water. The second basic human need is water. Would you like to come up and draw the next one? This one's going to be a little harder. <laughs> Henry's got the hardest one. I have confidence in your creativity, though. 
Would you like a hint? All right, do you want to show everybody? Very, very close. That is very biblical, Raina. That should be the right answer, but actually Anna got it. Air. Air is the third basic human need. Would you like to come up and draw the next one? definitely have an artist here. Would you like to show everyone? <laughs> Lydia! You got it! Come on up! Shelter! All right, yep, you can show everybody. You got it! That was super quick. Can I show? Oh, I'll show the congregation. Just in, There was a shirt here, but she erased it really quickly. <laughs> Would you like to come up and draw the next one? Would your brother like to volunteer on your behalf? You can say no. Anybody? Raina, do you want to come up for round two? Yes. I can always count on you to volunteer. All right. While she's drawing, I'll review the five things that we've come up with so far. Food, water, air, shelter, and clothing. And we've got three more, including the one that she's drawing. I'm also rethinking what I said earlier. This might be the most difficult one to draw. <laughs> Raina, can I show everybody what you drew? Yeah. We might need some help from the congregation on this one. Any guesses, Anna? Not a cup. Raina, would you like to give them a hint? It's something that you use in the water. Micah, you got it! They've got a really special brother-sister relationship here. I can just see it. So she drew a life jacket because the sixth item on the list was safety. Mm -hmm. Good job, Raina. All right. too. So love and what did you say? Relationship? You got it. Yep. Love and belonging slash relationship. Would you like to draw the last one? Thank you. And this is an easy one. You got 
got it. <laughs> this is sleep. <laughs> well, thank you for volunteering. The reason I wanted to go over all of these basic needs that humans have is because the passage today talks about how Jesus is the bread of life. And what that means is that because he was the creator of everything in all of creation, he can provide for our every need. So when you find yourself in need of food or water, air, shelter, clothing, safety, love and relationship or sleep, we can turn to God in prayer and present our needs to him because God listens and he cares and he is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask for or imagine. So the message today is, whenever you need anything, you can start with prayer. Sound good? All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for providing for all of our basic needs because you love us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. To start, I want to explain a little bit of the behind-scenes working of the church. The scriptures we read on Sunday aren't random. We use what's called a lectionary, and really what it is is a schedule for what we read and when. I share this to say I didn't pick today's passages. John 6 is what was on the schedule for today. And if I'm really honest, when I saw that this was a passage I needed to prepare a message for, I had to take a deep breath and whisper out a prayer. Reason being, I've been wrestling with this particular passage for a couple of months. The short version reason of why I've been wrestling with this particular passage for months is because I went to the doctor months ago for a rash on my arm, and the doctor's initial diagnosis was that I have a possible wheat allergy and that I needed to eliminate all wheat out of my diet. And while this might seem like a very mild diagnosis, I really wrestled with it. Wheat is in a lot of things. And as somebody who really likes to cook and bake and share a meal with others, it felt like everything in my life needed to change. No more cookies, no more cinnamon rolls, no more bread like I had once enjoyed. The reason I share this bit of information with you today is because maybe when you heard the passage, you thought about a time when Jesus provided what you needed. Or maybe, like me, you thought about a time or two when it felt like Jesus was withholding a good thing from you. For me, I've had to wrestle with what this passage says and the reality of my circumstances. Today, we have an opportunity to be honest together. I want to start by taking a moment to think more deeply about our understanding of God. What moments in your life did God feel most near? How did he answer your prayers? When did faith make sense? And now, let's think about the moments when God felt distant or silent. What brokenness or barrenness have you experienced? When was it hard to believe that God is real and that he really cares about his creation? My guess is that all of us have experienced both, both beautiful clarity and moments of discouragement and despair. The fact that we have both is what causes us to question, what causes us to wrestle. In the passage today, the people with Jesus found themselves in a similar predicament. They had read about miracles and likely even tasted and witnessed miracles, but they were still facing bondage and strife. The honest cry of their heart was why? Why can't God who spoke all of creation into being and who holds all things together in his care do the thing they so desperately wanted him to do? I think the people in today's passage wanted to believe. They just didn't know how. What they had heard and witnessed probably felt irreconcilable with their current circumstances. Maybe they had a sick child at home. Maybe there wasn't enough food on the table. Maybe there was conflict in their family. Maybe they were longing for a baby. 
We don't know exactly what was happening in their hearts or in their homes, but we find them here pleading for a miracle, pleading for a reason to believe in a good God when what they were experiencing in that moment didn't feel good. Can you relate? I can. Now let's take a look at Jesus's response. The first thing he does is remove any burden or untrue expectation that we might have of ourselves. In the passage, Jesus says, just believe. And while this might seem like an overly simplistic response, let's notice what he didn't say. Jesus didn't say that in order to get what we're seeking, we need to try harder. He didn't say that our hurt or lack is a punishment we received for something we did or something we failed to do. So what does it mean to believe? What is Jesus asking us to do? Very simply, I think Jesus is asking us to come to him with open hands, to bring our needs with an open heart, and to believe that he is who he says he is. To believe that God is a good father who loves his children and who will lovingly provide for their every need. Later in scripture, Jesus specifically says in Matthew 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do for you. For that sums up the law and the prophets. Now, the big question for today is, what does this look like practically? What does this look like in our everyday lives? What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to believe when we come before God with open hands and present to him our needs and the miracle we're hoping for doesn't happen according to our timeline or in the way we asked for? What are we supposed to do with the knowledge that God can provide, but hasn't yet? To my heart and to yours, what I believe Jesus' response to us is this. He has. What we long for, he has already given. When Jesus came down from heaven, when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus ascended back into heaven and sent us the Holy Spirit to be our helper, he gave us himself. All of who he is, he has given to us. He is the bread of life, our complete sustenance. Now, I know these might feel like empty words when there are hungry children to feed or when we've got a loved one who is sick in the hospital. But here is the alternative. We come to Jesus and ask for food and healing. He responds by providing food and grants miraculous healing. And then tomorrow comes. The hunger returns. Weeks or years later, a new ailment affects the body. Eventually, everyone dies. So often, the miracles we ask for only offer temporary comfort. And because our Father is all-knowing and all-loving, his perspective is eternal. He sees us in our need right now, right here, and he loves us more than we will ever know. But he also knows that the manna we ask for is temporary. And so, instead of giving us exactly what he asked for, he has given us himself. Our miracle is that Jesus died and rose again so that we can be with him now and forever. Amen. I could end the sermon here, but God in his infinite goodness and mercy doesn't end here. He has given us himself, and to us he says, come. In his presence, we can still ask for those miracles, and I believe that he wants us to. And so, do you know what? In the confidence of believing that I am a beloved child of God, I'm going to keep asking him to restore me to the joy of eating and good health, and I think you should too. In the confidence that you are a beloved child of God, keep praying Keep bringing your needs and your cares to God. I can't tell you how your story is going to unfold, 
but I can tell you with certainty that he is listening, that he cares, and that he is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask for or imagine. Because God is here with us, we have his love, his peace, and his power. And I believe that he is working all things together for our good and his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the Apostles' Creed. together in one voice. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Following on on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized, lay leaders, 
deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life. Where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. In the places experiencing the cold of winter, bring your warmth. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority that power is directed toward a more, toward a more just society. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, hear our prayer. O wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with the congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witnesses of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. We remember any who are sick or suffering, especially for Keith, Jan, Dave, Sean, Mark, Julie, Harlan, Beth, Gage, Alex, Maria, Perry, Tanya, Lorraine, Alan, and the family of Joe O'Reilly. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending him. peace to love the Lord and serve your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There are treats in the back for fellowship. Yeah, Good job, Mike. Good job, Mike. Good job, Mike. 